What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful and beautiful day today. The traditional markets are in fact closed. It is a holiday in the US. Lots of families are having the opportunity to sit down and gather around dinner, potentially having to hear about some cryptocurrencies from some of you out there. Now today is a good day to be talking about crypto. Bitcoin is in fact up today. However, as I said, this is not a traditional trading day for the market. So what is happening with Bitcoin? We are actually at a very critical point I'm going to talk about. And you can actually see right here that we've had some of the lowest volatility for Bitcoin in about six months. However, despite these boring markets for Bitcoin, there is something major brewing in the background that is absolutely huge that we need to talk about in today's video. So I do want to go over that. I want to discuss a huge Bitcoin signal as well as, of course, some Bitcoin FUD coming out of Germany and India. We're going to address that. I'll let you know my feelings on that and whether or not you should be worried. And if that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you are not subscribed, definitely consider it. And without further ado, let's look at the Bitcoin price. So having a look at what Bitcoin is doing right now, we actually find ourselves right here back inside this blue zone that I've pointed out. Now, this is an area where we have had a lot of volume, a lot of trading for Bitcoin. In fact, the VPVR is at its highest even at the previous peak before we had the 55% drawdown, and that's around $57,317. We are, in fact, currently sitting above that level as I'm making this video. Now, of course, anything could change in the next 24 hours. Are we looking to have a massive Black Friday sale? Well, let's have a look right here, because even if Bitcoin was to, let's say, get rejected from this area and come all the way down here, we still do have this historical trend line right here, which would be looking for some support. And we have actually continued to just bounce off this level every single time we put in higher highs, we put in higher lows. So this is very good for the structure of Bitcoin. As I've said, not much really has changed with the overall structure of Bitcoin. I do in fact remain bullish. However, at this very moment, we are getting to a critical level. You could see that we do have this blue line, this resistance holding us down. And if I actually zoom in right now, you will see that Bitcoin is struggling right now to break out of that area. Now, if we do have a breakout from this point, I do believe that Bitcoin will breach the $60,000 level and we may continue upwards. On the flip side, if we don't, we're probably going to end up back in this blue zone down here with a target of around $51,000 for Bitcoin. Now, as I said, Bitcoin could easily go back down to $50,000 and it would still be a bullish structure. However, if you are looking to play this breakout, we are at that level right now. Now, there is the potential that we bounce around in here for three to four more days. But as we know, Bitcoin is usually an impatient asset and we tend to break out sooner than later. So obviously, if you guys are looking to trade this, pay attention to the resistance levels and pay attention to the support. We are getting to crunch time and Bitcoin is looking for a big move. If you guys are interested, of course, you can check out my tutorials on how to trade. There's over $7,000 in bonuses below in the description of this video. Tutorial popping up above. And also for all of you that are using Bybit, I had spoke about the symbiosis project that I was really excited about. This is the uh, you know ticker SIS multi-chain liquidity enabler. And I'm letting you guys know because you have six days for the subscription to start. So if you want to get in on that early, head on over to Bybit, check out the links below. This is a project I'm very excited about. But in today's video, we're not looking to focus on altcoins specifically. I want to keep the focus on Bitcoin because Bitcoin right now is directly at the center of this rising wedge heartline, which is why some traders are kind of on the fence of they don't know if it's going to pump. They don't know if it's going to dump, right? Everybody's just kind of waiting for the next big move. But you can see right here that every single time Bitcoin does get above this resistance, we do tend to have a big move. In fact, the last time that we broke above the resistance right here, this is the trillion dollar market cap. Um, excuse me. This is the market cap 
chart for Bitcoin. This is not the price for Bitcoin, but you can see we did have almost a 21% move. So if we do get above this level, I would be expecting another move similar to that. And I would expect the price of Bitcoin to go back above $60,000, maybe bringing that investor confidence back in, right? So we are having a look at this. We do know that rising wedges are technically bearish patterns, but I do prefer three points of contact, which you can argue this double top right here, but I would like a little more justification before we jump the gun and just assume that Bitcoin is setting up for a massive crash. Now, the reason that we are afraid of this type of a pattern, as you can see right here, we did the exact same thing. We put in a rising wedge, and once we got rejected by the heart line of that rising wedge, we did in fact have Bitcoin break all the way down from around $64,000 to a a low of around $55,000. So just pointing out some similarities, you can kind of see that in the macro, we're doing something very similar to what we did back here, right? So it doesn't mean that we have to necessarily fall to the downside. Like I said, bearish patterns in bull markets are relatively neutral, right? So I'm not going to say, okay, just go ahead and short it. But if we do fall below that key level that I just spoke about, rewind the video if you need to see that again, then yes, you could potentially take an opportunity to short Bitcoin. You know, I'm not a fan of doing that. I don't recommend doing it, but nevertheless, you can make money even in a bull run if you want to try to scalp those shorts, right? So like I said, a friendly reminder, if you want to learn how to do that, definitely check out the tutorial popping up above. But something interesting that Will Clemente pointed out, right? So he says, over the last two weeks, we've had clear bullish divergence between Bitcoin supply moving to strong hands and price. Now we're going to have a look and see whether or not this actually holds up in just a second, but you can see right here, you know, back in, uh, you know, back in 2020, we had this bearish divergence and we did in fact have the price drop, but back here we had bullish, bullish and bearish right at the end of that white cough distribution where you can see right here, if I zoom in, we did in fact have a massive tumble. But having a look at what we're doing right now, we've actually had three bullish divergences and we're actually, well, the third one is happening right now as I'm making this video, which could signal that there is something big coming for Bitcoin and it's most likely going to be to the upside, right? Now, this doesn't mean short term as in tomorrow, Bitcoin falls 5%. Okay, everything's invalidated. No, remember, I said we're looking at the long term here. We still have a lot of room. Even if we go down to 50,000, we are still maintaining our upwards trend. And something that I mentioned to you a few days ago, that you can see right here, data from Santiment actually shows that Bitcoin whales have been accumulating at these levels. Now, we're not quite up to the area of supply that we had around you know, the beginning of last month, but we were sitting at around 49.5%. Now we're sitting at 49.1%, 40, uh, right? So we're, we're, we're slowly increasing back up from being around 48.9. Another thing that you can also look at is the uh, sentiment data, <laughs> sentiment. <laughs> so the Bitcoin sentiment, right? is that uh, right now people are kind of feeling a little a little concerned about Bitcoin, a little bearish. They're wondering what is going on? Why is Bitcoin not responding to all of this global inflation? Why is Bitcoin not responding even more to these ETFs that have come out? Well, you could see that historically when we do get sentiment down at these levels, and we're also looking at the fact that whales are accumulating, oftentimes the market is wrong, right? Most people are wrong, all right? If everybody thinks something's gonna go up, you could say it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but oftentimes they're wrong, right? Because not everybody's going to win in these markets. So you have to keep your eyes on that. Now, something else to mention is that we have seen the amount of non-zero balances reaching an all-time high, meaning that there are the most amount of Bitcoin holders ever in the history of Bitcoin. You could see right here, we reached 38.76 million. The previous high was 38.7, and that was set seven months ago. So this is bullish. You always want to pay attention to how many people are actually holding Bitcoin, right? Another thing that you need to notice is that we've seen exchange outflows absolutely skyrocket with the exception of that really weird Bitfinex pack of whales that keep sending Bitcoin to Bitfinex. I don't know what they're trying to do. Maybe they're trying to set up a short. I have no idea what these guys are doing. But if you have a look at the overall data, we've seen the majority, especially Binance specifically, having massive Bitcoin outflows. And I cannot stress enough that this is showing that hodlers are holding. They are not looking to sell. If they were sending it to the exchanges, then that would 
pretty much say to us that they're looking to sell their coins, whereas if they're taking it off of exchanges, unless you guys know something else they might be doing with Bitcoin, I mean, they're not using Bitcoin for DeFi, right? That would be Ethereum. I would say that they are looking to hold. So the fact that we're seeing whales accumulating, the fact that we're seeing that um, divergence over here that Will Clemente pointed out, and the fact that we're also seeing uh, you know addresses at an all-time high, these are very, very big things for Bitcoin. Now, let's talk about some of the FUD. Well, number one, we have India. Once again, coming out, there's fears about a Bitcoin ban, which incredibly, Bitcoin and Ethereum fell 24% on some of the Indian, uh, as far as the Indian investors are concerned. Um, you know, obviously their situation over there, I'm not really sure what's going on with the exchanges because honestly, this India news is it just changes every single day. It's like the China FUD. After a while, it's like the boy who cried wolf, right? He keeps crying wolf, you know, everybody reacts. And eventually, nobody cares after a while, right? So I think that these types of stories are having less and less and less impact. But really, if you break it down, the biggest concern that they're looking at right now is privacy coins, right? They wanna be able to track what people are doing. We know Bitcoin is pseudo anonymous. So I think it's more of an issue with these privacy tokens, privacy coins, rather than specifically Bitcoin. But nevertheless, the markets do have their reaction. Personally, I'm not quite worried. Now, over in Germany, we don't really bring up Germany too much, but we have had a little bit of FUD coming out over here. So we have Germany's new chancellor, Olaf Scholz, warning about a tulip-style bubble developing in the crypto market, adding the currency monopoly must remain in the hands of the state. He went on to say, I would doubt whether Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies have any prospects as a currency model. The danger is high that it will become a tulip inflation. Now, if you're not familiar with what happened in 17th century Amsterdam, essentially everyone was going over a tulip frenzy. Tulips were becoming some kind of a currency that they were becoming very interested in. The price absolutely went up. And it, it actually, this is interesting. I actually have a chart that compares the uh, 2017 Bitcoin, which is this red line, to the tulip mania, which is the green line. So you could see a lot of people in 2017 were saying that Bitcoin was looking a lot like tulips. Now, really quick, let's just talk about tulips, okay? Tulips are an endless quantity. You can take a tulip bulb, you can plant it, you can grow more tulips, you can get more bulbs. This is not how Bitcoin works. Bitcoin, there are only 21 million ever. There will never be any more. Sure, you can fork it, but it's not really Bitcoin, right? So I think this tulip mania comparison is a little bit ridiculous. Oh, and fun fact, if you guys want to actually see the... um. Right down here, we have the tech bubble of 1994 to 2002. That's actually this little blue line down here, right? So you can really see why people were freaking out about Bitcoin. But nevertheless, if we actually have a look at what Bitcoin ended up doing after this, well, yes, we did actually have a bit of a bubble pop right here. We fell all the way down to these levels and look at where Bitcoin is today. In fact, from the levels that they were calling the bubble, even though we did have a massive bear market that followed, Bitcoin is still up 270 now, that didn't happen for Tulip Mania, did it, my friends? Which is exactly why Bitcoin is what all of these investors, all of these hedge funds, these countries are looking to actually hedge against inflation, right? We saw what happened with Turkey. We saw years ago what happened with Venezuela. And we see what is happening right now with El Salvador. This is why we are seeing people turn to Bitcoin, owning their own assets, right? Non-confiscatable censorship resistant. There is no borders, right? This is why I talk a lot about Bitcoin on this channel, because at the end of the day, everybody's always trying to catch these, you know, 10x, 20x pumps, which is great. It's fun to speculate on the altcoins. But at the end of the day, if you're not actually holding some Bitcoin, especially for the long run, well, then... My question is, what exactly are you looking to do? Are you just looking to increase your dollar amount? I mean, yeah, we all want to have more dollars, but with inflation pretty much running out of control right now, right? We've had 40% of all of the dollars in circulation printed in just the last two years. This is getting a little bit out of control. And we need something like Bitcoin to actually help stabilize this global crisis that's happening right now, right? Some people say that it's gold, but we've gone over why gold has has a lot of flaws. Sure, you can make jewelry out of it, but nobody knows how much gold there is. A lot of gold is 
is basically paper gold derivatives. We also have gold under the oceans. Elon Musk is probably gonna end up mining an asteroid of gold at some point in our lifetime, right? So this is exactly why we continue to focus on Bitcoin. And if you just simply look at the data, it's actually pretty incredible. So obviously we have Bitcoin, PayPal, MasterCard, and Visa. MasterCard and Visa represented by these blue and red uh, lines right here. And essentially this just shows the amount of transactions processed on the network in dollar value. Now, clearly Bitcoin is nowhere near these two behemoths, but there was something very amazing that started to happen in the beginning of just this year. And if you could see right down here, PayPal is actually the blue and Bitcoin is the orange. And right here in Q1, we actually saw Bitcoin transactional volume uh, start to eclipse that of PayPal. Now, although right now it has been relatively stable, this definitely shows an interest in the Bitcoin network. We're seeing activity. We're seeing people use the network. We're seeing addresses go up, right? So maybe... You know, maybe if this uh, trend continues, it's only a matter of time until Bitcoin also reaches the same transactional volume as those behemoths, which are MasterCard and Visa. Now, of course, this isn't going to happen overnight, but nevertheless, this is quite an enticing chart, right? And I just want to end over here on the fact that we had, uh, speaking of actually PayPal, right? We actually had Stripe who did introduce Bitcoin back in 2014, but then said that they removed it due to transaction times and high fees. Well, now it looks like they may potentially be looking to re-enable it again. So this is huge. It's, it's, it's even bigger than enabling it because bringing it in the first time, you could say, well, we were just testing it, right? Then they got rid of it. But if they actually bring it back again, then they admit that they were wrong. They admit that they didn't fully understand understand it and they realize the need for it. In fact, if we actually have a look over here, there's a large set of investors that are actually totally unfazed about Bitcoin's recent dip. You could see over here, this was according to CoinShares recent weekly flow reported that despite the correction, we actually saw inflows topping 114 million last week, signifying that the majority of investments did in fact go into Bitcoin. ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood also believes that Bitcoin has strong institutional support she said in an interview, what we didn't expect when we did our study on Bitcoin was we didn't expect institutions, mainly corporations, to begin diversifying their cash on the balance sheet into Bitcoin. And I'm certainly thinking she didn't anticipate countries like El Salvador moving to the Bitcoin standard. So that is where I leave you today, my friends. I just wanted to give you a little quick overview of what is happening in the markets. For anyone that's having Thanksgiving uh, dinner with their family, if you're not, that's fine. We're hanging out together right here, right now. But at the end of the day, the reality is if you are here, if you are watching this video, give yourself a pat on the back. You are early. I know you may not think you are, but when you consider everything happening in the world and you look at where Bitcoin is today, you realize that it is utterly inevitable for a 250, a 500,000, a 1 million dollar Bitcoin in our lifetimes. And if you're not holding some Bitcoin, well, like I said, I don't really know what else this guy can do. This crazy guy on the internet can do to convince you. It's not my job to convince you. I, I, I prefer to just educate and give you the information, but keeping your money in a bank. Well, we know how that's worked out, right? So thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you have a wonderful and beautiful day today. Maybe we have a Black Friday sale tomorrow. Who knows? I'll be here. Hopefully you'll be here as well. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. And if you haven't checked out these videos popping up right here, right now, check them out. And until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.